Hey lady, do you know that movie The North Shore? Okay, if you don't, it's a must watch. Giving you fair warning right now, it is totally 80s cheesy. Anyways, here's what I'm getting at. In the movie, you've got the main character, his name is Rick, and he's a surfing teen from Arizona. Yes, Arizona. And he just won a local pool riding competition. After winning, he takes his earnings and he uses it to fly to Hawaii with his dreams of becoming a pro. But the thing is, he's never actually surfed in the ocean before. As he fumbles his way through Hawaiian surf culture and Mother Ocean, he meets Chandler, a surf guru, and convinces him to be his coach. Chandler finally agrees, and as Rick runs to pick out a board for their first lesson, Chandler tells him to put it down. His first lesson in surfing would not be getting in the water. It would actually be sitting on land, watching and observing the ocean. Enter a movie montage of Chandler and Rick sitting by the water all day until the sun goes down. Okay, I know I just took you through this 80s throwback, but here's what I'm getting at. It is really important to read the break before you get in the water. In my 10 years of surfing, I, I always knew that it, this was important. I'd heard before that you should spend at least 20 minutes watching, but I never actually knew like what to look for. So in the Surf Society, side note, the Surf Society is our unique digital women surfing platform where we get together to learn more, surf better, and live happy. In the Surf Society, our official mentor, Kim Hamrock, gave us a workshop called Read the Break. That workshop has four parts to it, and one of the parts is called Your 8-Point Checklist for Having the Most Productive Surf Session. This checklist includes what more experienced surfers are looking for when they go to check up on a break and see if they want to paddle out. And what a, having a checklist like this does, whether it's a physical checklist or a mental checklist, it allows you to assess the conditions and create a plan around that for what you want your surf session to be like. It can help you decide what peak you want to surf in or where you want to paddle out. And taking the time to observe can also help you get to know the lineup a little bit better. What I love about this is using this time to read the break will also help you set reasonable expectations for your surf sessions. I think it's super easy for us to get down on ourselves for not progressing to a certain degree with each surf session. But if you're able to identify when you get to the break, that maybe today's not a good nose writing day, maybe today's not a good cross-stepping day, I need to work on something else. This can help you manage your expectations and still make the session productive, no matter what the ocean has to offer. Taking the time to have this kind of ritual will also help you build your relationship with your break and build your relationship with Mother Ocean. This obviously takes time, but if you really dream of being one of those surfers that just really understands how your break works, then you need to have this kind of ritual in your session. So like I mentioned, this eight-point checklist is a part of our Read the Break workshop inside the Surf Society, which is for members, but I really want to share part of it with you. So what I've done is I've created a little PDF called Your Eight-Point Checklist for Having the Most Productive Surf Session, and you can download it for free. If you'd like your copy, all you have to do is go to surfsociety.com forward slash eight point checklist, all one word, or you can click the link in the show notes. I really hope that you'll enjoy this piece, this little piece of the Surf Society, and you'll take it with you as a ritual that you can practice every time you hit your break. And I hope that it'll give you an opportunity to really build your relationship with the break, build confidence out in the lineup and also have more productive surf sessions, aka catch more waves. So if you want to get this checklist one more time, head to surfsociety.com forward slash eight point checklist, all one word. Also, don't forget, Surf Society is spelled S-U-R-F-S-O-C-I-E-T-E. And I will also put the link in the show notes for you. All right, lady, so homework. Watch the North Shore and download your eight-point checklist to having the most productive surf session. Let's get to our episode. Hey lady, 
I'm your host, Laura Day. Welcome to episode 25 of Confessions of a Surf Lady, a podcast by the Surf Society. As always, I am so stoked to have you here. This one is super cool because we, me and my guest, Farah, actually recorded this episode after a surf session, just the day after, and we just had a really interesting incident that we felt like we had to share. I'm also extra stoked because I met Farah um, because she was a listener on this podcast. And then Farah became a member at the Surf Society and also joined us on our first Surf Society surf trip down to Baja with Manny Vargas. So with that, we got a chance to connect further and really form a friendship. Like when I talk about that, I am just so grateful for everything that this podcast has brought. And I'm really grateful for you, my listeners, for showing up and being part of the conversation. So with all that sentimental stuff out of the way, let's talk about our episode today. Today's episode is called Speaking Up for Lineup Safety. You are going to meet my surf pal, fellow Filipina, and surf society member, Farah. And we are going to share with you two stories, two incidents that we've had in the lineup together that really have to do with safety. The first story takes place in Baja, and you're gonna find out what happens when you paddle out and the fog gets so thick that you can't see shit. And the second story happened right here at home in San Diego. And we're gonna share with you how a board to the face and a confrontation in the lineup could result in an outcome that you would never expect. All right, lady, I don't wanna spoil any more of the story, so let's get to it. I'm super stoked to have you here on the podcast. It's kind of funny because I think you like originally found the podcast and then we kind of like organically became friends after that. Is that how we did it? Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, I think I was just looking for more females out there that surfed and they were um, presently online. And I happened upon confessions of a lady surfer and just been surf lady, lady lady (laughs) surfer. (laughs) It's okay. Get the brand right there. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, I just been following your progression and how it's grown. And I guess I've been a fan, even though I can't get the name right. I'm I'm a fan. (laughs) You get the concepts right. It's all right. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Surfer, surf lady. Yeah, you are whatever you want to be on any given day. (laughs) Whatever you want to call. You've been so supportive. And I'm like so grateful for you and other listeners like you. If, if like anything, it's not just about like the work and like being able to put it out there and having people listen, which is really cool, but we truly become friends. Yeah. Which is <laughs> so cool. We've like bonded over both being Filipino. Yeah. Um, we also bonded more when we, <laughs> when we went to Baja with uh, Manny because we're both <laughs> the short ones. So we both <laughs> sat in the back row of the suburban, <laughs> <In> the <back. laughs> which was like pretty funny. I'll have to post like more videos and, um, pictures and stuff of Baja. I mean, I meant to like when we got back, but I was so tired, like right yeah. when we got back that I kind of fell out of like the loop with it but well, yeah I need post to more. too often then like the account my account I just started posting like more than once which is rare for me and my account just started like wigging out so I got so frustrated because posts started disappearing and I didn't know something wrong with the algorithm I was so excited to post all these Baja photos and videos and then I it just Instagram just betrayed me. So yeah, Instagram's like, like no, <laughs> <laughs> no one gets to know about your amazing weekend in Baja <laughs> with the lady surfers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's it's been really cool. So we went out for a surf yesterday, and this yeah. is why we're doing this episode. Like, well, first of all, I hadn't surfed in like a month. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, you hadn't surfed in a while. Yeah, because you've had it's family awful. visiting. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. In that. Month of May is like, I'm so affected by the sun as well. I'm motivated when the sun is out, and there was no sun. It was May gray, so, <laughs> and it was windy, and it was just not the best conditions. That- it's not the best at all. Yeah. So for anyone that's listening, 
I'm in California. I mean, if you're coming to visit, spring is not the best time for surf. It gets super windy. Everything gets blown out. And actually, when we were in Baja, it was actually pretty windy too. But manageable, it still works. Have some good footage. Yeah. Except for that fog. (laughs) Except for which one? Oh my God. Oh my God, the fog. Fog. Should we share the fog story? I know we have another story to get to, but like the fog yeah. story was kind of good, right? Yeah, I, mean, I think the theme here is safety, really. The, the theme here is safety. Perfect. <laughs> so I don't know. Do you want it? <laughs> you can you can start it off. <laughs> so when you're on the water, I guess this is um in Baja, you know, this is the first time coming out there and paddling out. So like already you you're kind of cautious about conditions about the crowd about how you might be imposing and going into it everything ran really smoothly and then it was the was it the first morning it was the first morning okay and when we went out it was basically small like two foot and glassy yeah but we knew that there were these clouds just kind of this overcast just kind of out in the distance out in the ocean but, and we didn't really calibrate or realize how quickly the, this overcast was moving in. So I would say maybe like an hour or so, not maybe less than an hour or so, the, just this coverage just swooped onto land and this thick, thick fog just covered all of you know, the beach area, and you really couldn't see. First, it was kind of whimsical and it was kind of <laughs> just- cool. I think that's why out of all the people you and I stayed out. Yeah. <laughs> Cause everyone else went in and I was like, well, fair is here, whatever. It's fine. And like, so we both stayed. Yeah. And then it just got thicker and thicker. And then you just really couldn't see even two feet in front of you. And we knew which direction was the beach, but we didn't know if the current was pulling us you know that's another thing is like make sure you take note of the, which way the current is pulling you but even if you do take note you don't know how fast or where you're being pulled to because you could be being pulled north or south but not how far that you're getting pulled to so we and plus we don't really know this spot um while manny our our guide our instructor he's he's out there on shore we couldn't see him even if you wanted to like try to signal us to yeah. get to we really couldn't see land anywhere. (laughs) (laughs) And then the key thing is like, this is a break that's next to a cliff side. Yeah. So a high tide hits into the cliff side and there are definitely rocks. Kind of high tide. I think it was a little bit. Well, that, that was like the other thing too. I don't think, I mean, that's the key thing. Like knowing if the tide's rising or lowering before you get in, like we didn't. Yeah. I don't think we thought of that when we went out. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it, it, it was, everything just happened so quickly, but we knew that we had to get back on shore, we had to figure it out before, before you know if there was going to be a big set moving through and then just making the challenge that we're already facing even a bigger challenge. <laughs> so, so we did our best to try to paddle back to shore thinking like maybe we could take a wave in but it wasn't it was just like a lot of your nerves a lot of the, un- the unknowns that you had to battle with really testing yourself with the elements and trying to get paddle back to shore and I'm like I'm damned if I do, damned if I don't. I might as well, like, I might crash into rocks, but at least it's land. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I like looked at you. I was like, okay, so our options, I think, because like we're looking at the ridge line and trying to figure out, I think we could see like an outline of one fence. And I was like, okay, yeah. I think that we're like this far down from that cliff. And like, it, it was just impossible, like trying to make sense out of nothing. And knowing there's rocks in front of us, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, we could just paddle in and deal with what's in front of us. And that was option one. And like option two was like, we could just stay out here till this is done. (laughs) (laughs) Till we've drifted to Ensenada. (laughs) Like, I don't know. (laughs) Seriously. Yeah, it was pretty scary because you'd look and like, you wouldn't see the set until it was like upon you. Like you just couldn't see that, that far. 
And there was like that one guy who was there with the girl that, uh, do you think they were on a lesson? I thought they were on a lesson. I, I was getting, I was picking up that they were, that she was, she hired him for a lesson. Okay. But okay. if they were friends or whatnot, I mean, he wasn't the best. Not a time of panic. It wasn't looking good. Yeah. So we see this guy and I'm like, I think he's an instructor. Like, let's ask him, like, maybe he's from here. He'll be able to know like where yeah. we should go <laughs> in. So we ask him. First time there. <laughs> yeah, it was his first time. Plus, it was her first time surfing as well. And it was just, you know, blind leading the blind. <laughs> it really, it really was. Wait, so how did you, because you ended up paddling in. Yeah. And then I remember seeing you on the shore waving your board, like just giving us enough visual attention to see what direction you were at. Do you remember what happened? <laughs> did you just say, fuck it? I just yeah. honestly said fuck it because I you know I kind of try to remember what um other conditions that I've been in to try to get back to shore because I've been in some challenging situations as well and so if I just framed my mind thinking like okay this can be something similar to your time when Sunset Cliffs was really going crazy um which I've been in a situation like that I'm like okay it, it could get that bad and if it does, you survived it. Like that's yeah. <laughs> the mentality I had to put my 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 mind in. And so I just kept telling because I was like, okay, these rocks, I'm just going to pretend I'm in Sunset Coast. I'm just going to pretend I'm in a spot that I'm comfortable with, that I know. And so I just, just gingerly just tried to not get my foot stuck in the rocks or get it, get too scraped up. And I, before I knew it, I, I saw that I'm able to stand <laughs> <laughs> and I looked behind me and I didn't see any big waves like rolling through to yeah. try to like, you know, push me or take me up off my feet. So I was like, okay, I think I'm in a good safe spot. So I'm just going <laughs> to book it <laughs> right as I can to where there's no water hitting the shore. And then when I got to shore, I looked around and I couldn't, I had no idea where I was. I was, I was like, because the fog was still like, just messing any direction of which way was the house, which way was Manny, which way was, you know, all the familiar spots that I thought I knew where it was around me. So I just kept walking. I was like, well, I know this way is north. I know this way is south. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Either way, I'm going to walk. I have a 50-50 decision <laughs> to figure out if I'm going to run into any familiarity. So I, I think I headed south and I just saw Manny there, like after a few feet, I finally saw Manny, which was <laughs> only a few feet. That's how bad the fog was. That's so crazy. I didn't know he was that close to you. Yeah, he was really, really close, I realized. And then I was just like, oh my God, Manny was really surprised. He's like, where did you come from? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't, I honestly don't know another realm. <laughs> yeah, another realm, yeah. So, so Manny uh, was worried about you guys getting back because if I, he realized that if I, if I came from that way where the rocks were, you yeah. guys were going to come that way too. So luckily, like, you know, like Manny, Ma Manny finally took the initiative to like try to flag you down, but I don't think you guys really saw saw him so I was just like I because it's like orange it's a bright orange and green surfboard I'm like they could see this thing so I'm trying to get back in the water and like gesture my surfboard this way or that whichever way she had way yeah, so, yeah. Way you definitely you had the and I saw you and like and he kept saying paddle further north because he because you guys both knew there were rocks on that side and like I was trying to paddle towards where you were at and it was a lot of paddling yeah. And this poor girl <laughs> that was like, you know, she was like, just kind of scared. Of, of course, like I totally would be scared if that was like my first time surfing and this is what was going on. Like these sets, at least like four to five feet coming at you. You don't know what's inside. It's completely foggy. Her um, instructor was kind of not really being the <laughs> most like, uh, like the, the, I mean, the most patient maybe, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> Um, so, but when we finally came in and she said that this was like her first time surfing, I was like, I just want you to know, this is not what surfing's like. Like, I promise you I've surfed for like a decade and this has never happened to me. Not like this, you know? Yeah. 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 So, but we made it. 
And um, I think, yeah, we learned some key. Well, I think both of us were just like, oh, this is so cool. Let's just stay <laughs> out here. And then like three or four hours later, you went back out. And I was like, no, nah, cool. I'm going to wait. <laughs> and then that afternoon, you guys were like, come on, Laura, come out surfing. And I was like, I don't know. And I was like, it looks shitty out there. And I never say it looks shitty, but it kind of just was windy. You're like, come on. And we had been doing in the surf society, we'd been doing the fitness challenge. And in the yeah. fitness challenge, you earn points for every time you surf yeah. <laughs> and when you work out. Right. So every session you got like X amount of points and uh, Justine, who one day is going to be laughing at listening to this and laughing at it really hard. So Justine, who was in the fitness challenge, was basically like kicking all her asses because she's yeah. super competitive, super active every day. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like trying to get out of this like last session of the day. And everybody's like, Justine would do it. Or, or I don't know, I think I, I asked something and somebody, Manny was like, yeah, Justine would already be out there. And I was like, God damn it. <laughs> Must be Justine. <laughs> that extra push. <laughs> Being out for money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. It was so good. But yeah, so what would you say were are our safety tips since you, our theme is safety today? Don't panic. I think it's the biggest thing, you know, all, all, always lead back to the shore <laughs> maybe not maybe that's not the best to say um just don't panic and reassess your knowledge what you do know because you you'd be surprised how much you know in order to survive <laughs> and um take your time like don't think about don't think too much about you know, some big set that's going to come through and just, you know, put more added pressure or more added challenge to it. And um, eventually you'll, you'll find yourself and then hopefully somebody's on shore to, to help you rely on community, I guess. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> rely on that. Um, I guess that's my biggest takeaway. Try to, yeah, try to rely on what you already know to survive because it's, it's in you. It's in there. <laughs> yeah. I definitely have paid more attention now, especially surfing in a place like that, uh, what the tide's doing. So am I expecting there to be no yeah. beach? And then also we totally could have been like, that looks like fog out in the back, you know, and, and like get, gathered more information that we were going to be in that situation. I mean, maybe, maybe not. Sometimes that stuff just comes on, comes out yeah. like really quickly. There's the whole phrase of when in doubt, don't paddle out. But I mean, if you're already out. <laughs> yeah, right. Because that was like a beautiful morning. There was no, like, there was yeah. no indication that that was about to happen when we paddled that. Like even and, for like the first hour we were out. And I've been in fog before, like up in Del Mar. It, 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 I've been in that fog. So I was like, oh, it's not going to be that crazy. But it, it got really a lot thicker than what I was, no, what I've known. And so I don't know. Sometimes it's just like, if you find yourself, you will find yourself in a dangerous place situation that you didn't expect but you know you you could it's don't panic <laughs> yeah don't panic totally okay so that brings us to our session that happened yesterday um yeah. and I was like we need to record an episode like ASAP because we gotta keep it fresh yeah um so like tell us what's up what happened yesterday oh gosh I I hope I phrased this right because I was just thinking about like how am I gonna best describe what happened because anytime anybody's trying to describe a situation where they've had some kind of interaction with another surfer it doesn't really come out right <laughs> like <laughs> so I think about stories and I'm like I don't know how that makes sense so I'm hoping that how I frame this will make sense and then Laura you'll have to help me out because maybe okay. I'll get my words mixed up um so we're at La Jolla Shores yesterday, and it's a pretty good day. I would say it's like about two to three feet, maybe sometimes four feet. I would I I would consider it really mellow and easy waves, um, just really easy paddle out. Sometimes La Jolla Shores can be a really difficult paddle out, um, and it was getting kind of crowded, you know. So, but manageable, like nothing out of the ordinary, and knowing how to navigate the crowd, you're like, okay, I'm aware that this person, that person there is, uh, you know, they need their space or they need, they need help or like, they got it. They're fine. I'm going <laughs> to, 
staying out of their way. <laughs> I would hope other people are seeing me and making that same judgment as well. Like stay out of her way. I hope it's that judgment. <laughs> <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> this is my peak now. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say it's about like an hour in. I don't know, maybe two, maybe half an hour into our surf session. You kind of drifted away. Oh, um, yeah, 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 I did. I do. <laughs> but um, actually, I was thinking like, I, when I spotted you, I was like, oh, I'll probably paddle out over there. I'll just wait for the next set. And I'm thinking, and that set ended up being the the incident the incident <laughs> so um I a set comes in I take a wave and then you know I'm like done I get off dismount and then I'm paddling back to um paddling back up to the lineup and so you know the set's still rolling through so waves are still breaking and the waves aren't you know crazy breaking and mind you also I should also describe that I'm surfing a 5-2 fish so it takes me an extra amount of time to paddle. Whereas if you're on a longboard, it's, it's a really quick paddle. So it's very key to know this information. <laughs> so as I'm paddling back to the lineup, um, I noticed that there's this guy that is on my, this is my left-hand side. He's, you know, catching up on me on his longboard, on his soft top. It's a foamy, which thankfully it is a foamy. Um, but he just whizzes right by me, like right on my left on my left side here, and I'm just like, all right, dude. And then, like, I see this wave breaking. You know, you're awfully very close to me in my mind. I'm thinking this, and then I figure, you know, we're all going straight, just surf straight, just take the wave, just take the wave that's gonna break on you. Instead, what he decides to do is paddle past me, then cut me off. And then right when he does that, the wave breaks on us. And so his board comes flipping forward towards me and slams me right in the face. I am like, at the same time, I'm like, I pray to God this duck dive that I'm about to do is to <laughs> get me out of the way. It's going to happen next. But it just didn't, it didn't help, you know? So the wave breaks the the his foam board pops out because he has no control over his board pops out and slams me in the face and I resurface and I'm thinking oh crap like I bet my nose better not be broken but I feel my nose piercing just is bent out of shape and that's so, crazy <laughs> so thankfully <laughs> it had this in a hard top uh, my face would have been broken. It would have been to the point where I probably would be in emergency needing to get my nose fixed. And that would not be, I mean, it would be, I think it would be a completely different story. But um, oh, yeah. I was still pissed off because yeah. so my nose piercing's bent and my attitude's bent out of shape. <laughs> <laughs> I resurface and I'm like, what the hell is your problem? Are you fucking kidding me? And he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm like, yeah, right. You saw me. You saw me. You surfed right past me. You snaked me. And I'm just like, I don't care who sees because everybody, it's a crowded spot at this. Yeah. Everybody's just like staring awkwardly at this chick yelling at this <laughs> And I'm just like trying to keep checking my nose to see or if I'm bleeding or if like anything's broken, if I'm feeling any pain. And there was a, a guy that asked me like, hey, are you okay? And I'm just like so heated and like, I don't fucking know if I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me, am I okay? <laughs> I don't know if I can't see if like there's anything wrong with my face right now and I'm like looking at my board and the thing that gets me so triggered and why I get so pissed off is just first and foremost it's etiquette and safety and the kid the guy you know he's young and he he just I'm already falling into these judgment stereotypes that I have of other surfers out in the lineup so you know, I'm assessing him. I was, I, I was assessing him getting so pissed off. And it's like, it's not the best. It's not very, a good character. It's not, it's not good to be thinking these things, but I'm thinking of all the mean things I could think about. Uh -huh. 
person, about being a beginner, about being stupid, and about like, like I noticed that he was Brazilian, and I'm like, of course he's Brazilian. They don't care. They don't care <laughs> shit about other surfers because that's the stereotype. It's an unfortunate, really sad stereotype. I was like, ah, oh, he's Brazilian. They're just, I'm like muttering under my breath. I'm like, they're just, they just surf wherever they please. They don't care who they run into. Like, and then you finally coming over, you paddle over and you're like, does somebody need to get their ass kicked? <laughs> who needs to beat up right now? <laughs> hey, what happened? Are you okay? I'm like, who needs it? Like, whose ass do we need to kick? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Like- it was just so intense and I, I know I made it intense and I know I'm not looking like a good person at this point, but like, it's that or like, what was I also supposed to do? Was I supposed to be like, oh no, man, it's cool, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> no, it's everything. And you know, you may have broken my, sur- my surfboard. Oh yeah, it's fine. Like, nah, I'm not there. <laughs> like, I'm there. Well, I think like the key thing is like, you just got hit in the face. Like that is like, it, I would say you would be hard pressed to find someone that could keep their exposure when they've been hit in the face unexpectedly. Yeah. 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 I, I, and I, I guess it's a lot of frustration in general that, you know, bubbled up of frustration about people who don't play it safe, people who don't uh, respect etiquette and, have any spatial awareness because you run into that so many times and it's there's it, there there's not enough uh incidents or blatant incidents where you can just go all out and be like dude stop doing what you're doing get out of the line so i guess it was like a bubble up of all of those um unresolved situations that finally it's like oh like you <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let this go now. <laughs> so, so, um, so I let him have it, and then you know, like he's, and I hear him in the back talking to. Her, I hear him down in the line talking to his friend in Portuguese, and I'm thinking like he's probably talking shit about me. You know, I'm gonna talk shit about him in English, <laughs> like. <laughs> so I'm just like complaining about him in front of you and in front of anybody else that's earshot. I've totally been in situations where like something happens and like it sucks in the sense that you you have to I believe you have to say something and like whether that is that you end up yelling or whatever it is like something needs to be said and it sucks because the feeling is something sometimes like oh my god I'll like all these people are watching me but you know what I'm pissed I'm fucking pissed right now you know And then I hit a, hit a wall where I'm just like, I don't give a fuck who sees me. You guys can fucking watch me. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I was like, you, you watch me regulate your lineup that you surf in and keep your lineup safe. The bystander effect. Like you're just watching something unravel. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to put on a show. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, totally. (laughs) For everybody else. (laughs) <laughs> to see uh this bitch isn't going to take things quietly <laughs> <laughs> and like I love that I like so love that about you because I know if I go surfing and like something happens to my friends or something happens to me you, everyone here is going to hear about it because this isn't our lineup and we're here together and sometimes that makes like people other people that I surf with maybe a little more uncomfortable because like they're just not used to confronting like that but I'm like yeah, but you know, if it happens to you and I'm with you, I'm going to say something too. Like, I'm going to have, we're not going to let this go quiet, you know? And I think with that mindset of you, like saying something that led to you saying something to that guy, which is super appreciative because we wouldn't be where we are today. Uh, so <laughs> how do I put this? Like the guy that hit me, we're friends now, but let me explain <laughs> why we're friends now. <laughs> Yeah. So it's funny because, because I knew that you were felt bad that like you had to yell at him. Right. Yeah, and I'm like, do that feeling. It, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. What was your question? No, I'm just like, no. And that feeling sucks. Like that sucks. But you were obviously hit in the face. I was like, should I say something to him? And when I, I ended up surfing a wave, I ended up right next to him, like right next yeah. to him. So Fair I was good. like, let me just ask him. I'm like, Hey man, like, did you, did your board and hit my friend in the 
did it hit her in the face? And he was like, yeah, you know, that it happened. I'm trying to say how he was sorry, you know, all that. And then fi- finally, you know, what changed it to me meant, I said, like, do you need a lesson on how it works out here? And he said, a lesson? I was like, yeah. He's like, yeah, could you please tell me? That's when I realized, okay, his attitude is what changed everything. Yeah. And I talked to him for a while. And then I told him, I was like, well, you know what? She's really upset as she should be. Cause he was like, she was, I was trying to say sorry, but she was so angry. I was like, yeah a board hit her in the face. Like that would make you angry. Yeah. And I was like, but she's really upset. So if you really are sorry, like you should tell her again. Cause she doesn't think that that was an accident. And then at that point, did he approach you? Was that what happened? Yeah. I took another wave and then I think he gave, he gave his board to his friend. Cause I think he didn't want to come near me with his board. <laughs> come to think about it. <laughs> Playing in the back of my mind. Because I noticed I was like, where the hell is this board this time? (laughs) (laughs) You've ditched it now. (laughs) But he came up to me and he's like, I am so, like, I just want to let you know, I am really, really sorry. And I'm like, are you sorry? You know, like, why are you, like, in my mind, I'm thinking, why is he talking to me again? Because he, and so he's like, I want to know what I did wrong. And I'm like, how do you you know what you did wrong. I felt like I had to talk about, I had to talk to him like a mother. I was like, you know what you did wrong. You know, you completely disregarded the, the, the etiquette and the safety. And for me, safety is the biggest thing that will set me off, especially if it puts everybody at risk. Like I yelled at a kayaker for being at a lineup. This was at Termo. He was like, and this is like a long, long time ago. Um, not the kayaker, there was, okay. Side note, there was a kayaker that was actually really skilled at Termo, and I didn't get mad at him because he knew what he was doing, but some other random kayaker came to Termo and was, uh, you know, trying to be in the lineup of, you know, 10, 10 people, and I just had to say something like, this is not safe, like, it's not safe for you to be here, your kayak can knock anybody out, <laughs> like, so anyways, you can edit that part out if you want to do that. <laughs> no, I, I feel like, Sarah, making your lineup a safer place. <laughs> yeah, that's like, I think that's the one thing that will always trigger me if I'm going to throw down. I am going to throw down because you violated the the lineup with how unsafe you're being. And then maybe, of course, like your etiquette. If that comes, if those two things combine, then you're going to s- summon me. <laughs> 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 it to him explained why it was unsafe for him to just pass other surfers up like I told him you cannot paddle past somebody and then cut across them like especially when you see a wave coming everybody's going in the same direction you just can't do that because that situation will arise and it did and had it been a hard top surfboard my face would have been broken and blood everywhere. So that would, that like, that's the worst case scenario or a concussion or Mm -hmm. just somebody just doesn't even notice. And then I'm, you know, laying down face down on the, in the water. Like there could be so many bad things to think about here, but at worst, my face definitely would have been a hundred percent broken. So it's a hard top surfboard. So having him understand that, like, you can't do that because you fucked me over. He's like, oh, I get it. So I got to fuck myself before I fuck anybody else. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, dude, that's the best thing to, that's the best way to think about it. Fuck yourself in the lineup for everybody <laughs> else's safety, you know, take it, take one for the team. <laughs> that's so funny. So it was nice to see this light bulb come out, come off. And also the fact that he really wanted to understand what he did wrong. And it's so rare to think that anybody wants to know what they did wrong. Everybody wants to double down and say that they did nothing wrong. It's very common in the <laughs> world today. <laughs> yeah. Um, so etiquette, I'm think, and I and I explained to him about being spatially aware about others. You know, you have to just read everybody around. You know, the waves here are like La Jolla is an easy day. Today's an easy day. If you get fucked, you're not gonna drown. That's not gonna happen to you. Like everything here, it's a mellow day. 
you know, he's like, oh, thank you so much. I, you know, I've only been here for 20 days. I just came here from Brazil for 20 days. So I get it. He's like learning, yeah. not just the lineup. He's trying to understand like just everything with adapting in general. So I think it's a lot of pressure. And so I, you know, he was really sweet and he wasn't um, resistant. He wasn't resistant to hearing feedback and he wanted to know more about, you know, surfing and, and, and what, who am I? And so that prompted me to ask him questions. And then all of a sudden we're laughing. <laughs> we're joking <laughs> and, we're laughing and we're having a good time. <laughs> so like, and I, and it's, I was like, but it takes a big person to go up and, and want to really have a conversation because even I don't, I don't, do that either you know but I'm willing to always have a conversation if you want to prompt a conversation and you know in the surf world and in lineups you don't have conversations unless it's about real estate or coming back from a surf trip or nfts and (laughs) 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 that they have out there (laughs) Um, but yeah like um yeah, nobody ever really wants to confront safety, I guess, and admit that they were wrong. Um, and I, he set an example to me, too, to, to be humble. And, you know, I felt really bad after that for yelling at him, even the, and knowing that, I mean, I felt really bad yelling at him because he was truly sorry. And I wasn't receiving that. I wasn't, I was so angry that I hope that if I ever cross somebody in the lineup as well, you know, henceforth, just, I hope that they're either also willing to forgive me as well. It happens. I'm not saying that I'm the perfect surfer. I'm not. And I know that like, there are going to be incidences that you can't control and that you just hope that the person that you end up harming or semi harming that they're forgivable, that they're forgiving as well. And that, um, that just overall, we all just, I think we overall just want to have a good surf session because I wanted, I didn't want to sit in my anger as well. I didn't want to ruin, it was such a beautiful day. And the last thing I want to experience is me having a terrible surf session because not because of the waves, but because I had this terrible interaction with another fellow surfer and I would hate for that surfer as well to have a terrible surf session because they experienced me (laughs) being so (laughs) angry or, you know, scowling or whatever. So I, I think that we could get so past it if we just, take that little time to talk to one another to to formulate that community that sense of community out on the lineup so yeah and I think he totally I think surprised me also because he was like what in his like mid early 20s or mid 20s and typically a, a, a telling a guy something like that in their mid or early 20s they'd kind of give you a fuck off attitude um yeah and he he wasn't like that and that was so refreshing and it made the session actually so much better with how stoked he was that he made new friends like he was like so like so appreciative he was like so glad like asking us um what our Instagram handles are like, you know, trying to like, and he actually surfs at Tourmaline too. So I, it, it really not just like made the session just like, okay, you know, like neutralized it. It like actually ended up the other direction where it was like, oh, wow, that ended up being a really nice interaction with like people we didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it it's kind of, um, it, it surfaces like those kind of interactions, like you said, you know, seeing who he is you're like oh this is a young kid from Brazil like you're servicing I'm servicing all these stereotypes and judgments about who this person is and not if if it wasn't for him actually engaging in a conversation I would have sat with myself and continue to assume that all young Brazilians are like this and it's not fair it's not a fair way to think about people out there you don't know who they are what stories they have out there that who they really truly are, you know, as a human being on land, you know, but you only get to see this small little aspect of 
slice of their life and how they carry themselves because they're panicking, you know, or they're, <laughs> <laughs> they're scared or they're new to this environment. So I think it taught me a lot as well. I love how like surfing also teaches you about a lot about human behavior and socializing and um, yeah, I guess that's like a, I could trail off into that thinking, but I, <laughs> I just feel, I also feel, I guess I want to say that I feel bad that I created all of these prejudgments about him and I don't want to have these kind of thoughts about Brazilian surfers, about 20 something year old surfers, because they're I, he represented himself well. <laughs> I hope that I represented myself well back, you know, after engaging with him. After yeah. Him. Yeah. So well, you know, always- I have to give you credit too, because honestly, if I didn't know you as a person that's like quite open minded and articulate, you know, with the whole getting hit in the face thing, it's totally. I think valid to be angry and like blinded by that anger and, you know, go off. Like, I think that's a totally reasonable response that anybody would have. I just want to remind you, cause I know it, it sucks to feel bad about that, you know, but like, come on people, like everybody's human. You're all human. If you're going to pretend like this looks crazy, you you're going to pretend like you don't have crazy, like you've never experienced crazy in your life. So no, I want to remind you that, but I, I already knew that like, you're so open-minded about that. And if somebody was going to come and talk to you, whether you agreed with them or disagreed with them, you were going to be able to like carry a, a civil conversation about it, you know, assuming they're not like insulting you, you know? Yeah. So like, if I didn't know that about you, or if I wasn't like so sure of that, I probably like, wouldn't have been like, Oh, go talk to her, like <laughs> tell her, you know? So it's like really credit to you and to be able to walk away and, you know, I could judge people less because <laughs> we, all, we all could like you say that. And I'm thinking like, yeah, I could judge people less too. I totally could not come forward with like stereotypes before yeah. approaching someone so hard, you know? Yeah. It, it is really hard to steer away from the stereotypes on the lineup because they are very blatant ones. And I'm pretty sure that we paddle out there with people stereotyping us out there, whether we're women, you know, or we're, you know, coming out with a long board or a certain, right. or a certain type of board. I like to think that we set our, set an example of ourselves out there. Like, I think for those that stuck around, I want to see <laughs> stuck out around in the lineup to see all of that unfold where it went from, this girl, this chick yelling at this dude to, okay, why are they laughing together <laughs> 20 minutes, 30 minutes later? <laughs> I like to think that maybe they see, they see something like that and they're like, oh, are they friends? Were they friends all along? Or maybe like that situation could turn into a good situation or I don't know. Like, I hope that it, it did set some kind of positive example about to our community in, in the surf world, um, to those who saw it, I hope it made a difference. <laughs> so you also generally have, when there's confrontations, other people in the lineup um, that may or may not, they usually will never get involved. Um, sometimes they might, but you know, one girl would ask me, she's like, hey, like, I just wanna check, are you okay? And I was like, thank you for asking that. Like, that is like really, really nice of you. I'm like, I'm totally fine. You know, I'm just like talking to him about this thing that happened. But I was like, thank you for asking that. And she's like, yeah, man. Like, she's like, we're like the only chicks out here. Like we have to stick together. And that mentality, I don't know. I thought was really cool because just because you see other women in the water, that is not always the case. That, That doesn't, isn't always the vibe. So it was really cool for her to, to reach out and say that. But I think that we should all take more responsibility of what our lineup is like. And yeah, it, that's your community for the next two hours that you're out there. So be a community, you know, there is that angry guy. There's always some angry guy out there and maybe he just needs encouragement or positive, some positive energy sent his way. Uh, I guess like, you know, or, you know, somebody just wants to be left alone or it, it takes, I think it's like small, I guess it takes small gestures so that that other female surfer coming up to you and asking, was everything okay? Like even a small gesture like that just is an acknowledgement that like, this, this is, is a safe place. Yeah. 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 And it's cool because it, it allows some kind of 
recognition that something happened instead of staying staying silent about it. So I yeah. hope there's some kind of impact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think ju- it, it was so funny because like when you were talking to him, I was like, I bet they're going to become friends. And then like a couple minutes later, you guys are laughing. I was like, I think they're friends now. <laughs> but um, it, it was such a cool, it's such, it's so funny because I've, you know, there's this book that I'm reading. Um, well, I do a bunch of audiobooks all the time. And in one of the most recent ones, one of the stories was about how like, one guy pissed off the other guy and then whatever, something happened and now they're really good friends, right? And so these these can be situations that turn into something positive and remaining open-minded about that can bring you something really cool. If it, even if we never surf with the guy again, just the experience was like, wow, like you, there can be something good underneath all of that. Yeah. Um, and that's like a good feeling when you're going out surfing with, you know, a ton of people all the time. <laughs> What kind of advice would you give to women in the lineup on just like navigating these type of situations? Huh. Your feelings are valid. I think that it's okay to express yourself. I think, you know, what we're all trying to do on land and on, uh, on the lineup is take up space. And so take up that space. And if you know that you were wronged and I think it's you should speak up it's okay to speak up I mean whether the situation is going to get worse or make it worse or make get better like at least speak up exercise that voice yours then I think it draws up your confidence to speak up on in different situations I think that we're so I think it just opens up opportunities to know more about yourself and um, so yeah, it's okay to take up space. It's okay to express yourself. Your feelings are valid, at least in this situation. I felt like, my yeah, I felt are, bad yeah. in the end. What would you say if like, I'm someone listening to that advice, which I think is amazing advice, but I'm still feeling really timid or really fearful, uh, because I don't know, maybe what consequences might be going through my mind to like speak up. Do you think there's a, there's a piece of advice before saying speak up that, that might speak to people that might feel more timid than that? It takes a lot of practice. I think it takes a lot of practice going out there every day to learn how to navigate the lineup because I, I've been surfing for over a decade and I've never been in a situation that bad. As it I really experienced yesterday, I even yeah. explained this to him. I was like, in the 10 years that I've been surfing, oh my god, I- am I like your bad luck? <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe, wait, well, yeah, we are <laughs> several incidences. No, <laughs> yeah, like, I've never been in an accident that bad. Uh, that, um, that because I, I. I prided myself in uh, navigating the lineup and reading reading be- everybody's behaviors before. Mm-hmm. But it's like I put the same amount of energy reading the li- reading the waves, reading the you know the conditions as much as I put energy into reading the people around me. So I've always managed to navigate my way around, but when you do come into those incidences, I think that you build up this knowledge that helps you build up this confidence mm-hmm. to know what actually happened, what went wrong, what what could you have done to prevent this. And so running into an incident like that, I knew exactly what happened. It wasn't yeah. it wasn't like a gray area. It was like, no, he did not have any spatial awareness. He just He's a beginner-ish. He's a bodyboarder, but he's a beginner-ish in a new environment. I didn't know these things, but I knew that he looked like he, you know, he didn't know really how to manage the the line about there. So that's why he panicked and tried to avoid the wave and crashed into me. Um, so when you come to that conclusion, then you you can be confident to express like what happened. Mm-hmm was not right, was not appropriate. And you didn't do anything to create that situation. But I looked at that specifically. I hope that kind of, I hope that 
that explain? Yeah, I, I think obviously experience is a, is a big one, right? And also you're really good about keeping a journal. Um, I need to be better about one. But also I think if you look at these experiences that you might have, like like him, let's say, let's say no one spoke to him about what happened. Like, let's say we didn't have the second chat, chat up and like no one became friends. And he goes home and he's like, this is what happened. And if you, if you were him in that situation or, or you were Farah, I'm talking to the audience or to the, yeah, to the, to my listeners here, if you were, if you were him or if you were Farah, you could go home and be like, what happened there? And you could talk to other more experienced surfers and say like, Hey, this was what the situation was. What was the right thing to do? What was the wrong thing to do? Or what was the safe thing to do? You know? Yeah. And maybe from that, start understanding more. There are things in the lineup, even when people do know that they're doing them, that they, that are wrong. Yeah. Um, and, and you have to like encounter that situation enough times, like being back paddled. If you're new, you're going to get back paddled, meaning you might be in the perfect sit- spot for a wave and a more experienced surfer is going to come up behind you and around you to get themselves in a little bit more of a perfect spot. Right. But you were already there. Right. I remember being a beginner and that happening to me and me like asking my boyfriend at the time, like, I don't get it. Why did that happen? You know, I I thought it was like mine. And, but until like having those conversations and seeing it happen multiple times, only then can you confidently be like, yo, can't do that. Get out of here. (laughs) You know? (laughs) But yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm just trying to think like, yeah, when, if you're, when you're newer, I mean, I guess that experience talking to people, being open-minded, being open-minded. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Replaying the events in your head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And don't be deterred if somebody does yell at you. Mm-hmm. I might yell at you. <laughs> <laughs> then <laughs> you'll be friends. <laughs> yeah, but we'll be friends if I yell at you. <laughs> so I, uh, I think that if you are, you know, get, or you're just starting out to be a starting off into surfing like you do have to realize that it's a that it's a lot of mental uh exercise Mm -hmm. that comes into practice not just physical so you do have to get over you know your your timidness (laughs) sorry I have to be upfront you have to get over being timid because you're not going to get far if you're going to be timid yeah sometimes you do need to make those mistakes but I hope you're making those mistakes with a soft top board then (laughs) (laughs) um and yeah I mean it and that being said this whole conversation actually is partly reframing surfing to me in my mind like you can think surfing as a sport where you have this wave and you have this board and you're at the beach but really, especially because of how crowded it's become, serving as the sport includes the people around you. Like that is now part of the game. And if you're gonna play, yeah, if you're gonna play this game, if you're gonna catch these waves, you also should expect yourself to become well versed in the the movement of people around you and what's going on. And yeah, it's 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 really cool. It is really, you know, that game of piling out assessing who and and like I can't blame you that much for stereotyping him because we do go out and stereotype guy with no leash and a mustache going to try to take all my waves like you know, yeah. you know? <laughs> like barely like, wearing um, his wetsuit is like half of yeah. like why are you wearing an open wetsuit jacket <laughs> so like I mean stereotyping is gonna happen in that sense but yeah I think when it came down to it um you were able to have a conversation and let him like take that stereotype away but put in the time just put in the time (laughs) put in the time yeah well Farah thank you so much not only for such a fun surf yesterday I know I texted you yesterday like oh my god that's just what I needed (laughs) um yeah it really was and it was just like such a good feeling for that situation to turn around so I was like glad to be a part of it I feel like that rarely happens so it's like really cool to know that that can happen that could be that should that could be our standard that could totally be our standard in the lineup right well hopefully it doesn't happen too often <laughs> yeah, well, not, the, not the board <laughs> thing, in the face thing no <laughs> yeah no I'm just glad you were there to be honest it would have been something different who knows who knows, but I'm just glad that I had somebody, I, and I'm usually a solo surfer, so 
to have to have this happen when there I had a friend there like I'm even more thankful because you really drove the conversation to happen yeah and if it wasn't a conversation we were gonna kick ass so <laughs> no <laughs> I'm just kidding yeah most of my friends uh, probably already know that if you surf with me and someone fucks with you I'm gonna fuck back <laughs> like <laughs> Way in the <laughs> nicest way in the you should say sorry to her yeah <laughs> cool thanks so much Farah. thank you thank you for letting me share this story <laughs> absolutely thank you Farah, for coming on and sharing these stories with me today like i mentioned i'm so stoked to call you a friend I'm really, really grateful that this podcast has introduced me to amazing women in our community like you. All right, now before I sign off, I am going to get on my little soapbox. I hope that after listening to this episode that you, our listeners, will feel more confident in speaking up for lineup safety. And I want you to know that speaking up can look many different ways. From my experience... As women, no one is ever truly happy with the way that we handle situations. There is always the inevitable commentary of, you know, you were too nice. You should have stood up for yourself or that was too aggressive or I would have done it differently. And if you had done it differently, it would have turned out differently. I really believe that all this inevitable commentary that we expect to hear if we speak up really hold us back from standing up for ourselves when we know we should. It's taken me a very long time to learn how to speak up in the lineup and in life without feeling ashamed, guilty, or worried about what other people would think. But through gaining experience in the lineup, learning how to trust my intuition, and also knowing that everything would be okay if I happened to make a mistake or I did happen to overreact, I was able to build confidence. I was able to get to know more about myself and how I could navigate certain situations. After a decade of surfing, I now understand that speaking up doesn't just mean a better lineup for me, but it also means a better lineup for my community. Speaking up in the lineup verbalizes the expectations that we must have of each other to maintain a safe lineup. Sometimes speaking up is yelling and getting angry at someone that is deliberately being unsafe and reckless out there. Sometimes speaking up is just saying, yo dude, you can't do that here. Sometimes speaking up is throwing lighthearted shade. This is one of my favorites. If I'm feeling quick on my toes, I will make some kind of joke to point out that whatever happened was not cool. But sometimes speaking up can be, hey, can I give you a tip? And honestly, sometimes speaking up is paddling away. What I'm getting at is there's no right or wrong way to speak up. There's no magic amount of intensity or combination of firmness but niceness that's so dialed in that you won't upset anyone, but you'll definitely get your point across. There's also no other way that you should have handled it. There's simply the act of doing it and the act of learning from it. So ladies, I encourage you to speak up when you know that something needs to be said. I encourage you to do it in whatever way you want to do it and disregard any judgmental or non-productive bystander chatter. This includes any self-talk that you have going through your head at the moment. I'm encouraging you to speak up because I am counting on you. I am counting on you to regulate our lineup. I'm counting on you to take up space. I'm counting on you to demand respect as well as give it. I'm counting on you and I promise you that you can count on me too. And who knows, maybe speaking up in the lineup can actually lead to a new friendship. All right, lady, we've come to the end of our episode, but not the end of the conversation. Thanks again for joining me here on Confessions of a Surf Lady, a podcast by the Surf Society. 
I'll see you again here on our next episode. Your host, Laura Day.